Welcome to Big Flippers Episode 4, where I'm your friendly host, Mike the Most. In this video, we'll be tackling the console's power supply like it's a really ugly football player with the ball and we're on the other team. We're actually going to transform this thing by giving it a whole new life. It's going to be a new power supply when we're all done. I think you'll want to check this out if you're interested in electronics and restoring vintage stuff. The power supply is usually the thing that is the weakest link and the thing that needs the most TLC. It's also the thing responsible for the quality of the product. In this case, we want it to be as good as it can be, and it's not so good right now. So we're gonna make it awesome. Let's go. Behold, a pair of 400 series power supply units from AMEC. The 400 series power supplies are pretty simple in general in that they are constructed with a bank of off-the-shelf switch mode power supply modules. They're not as low noise, as reliable, or as powerful as the MPS-15 linear power supply made by AMEC during the same era. These particular power supplies were made a few years apart, and as a result, they have different connectors on the back and have different DC power cables. That means we cannot use these with the same desk. The supply on the left was gutted of its electronics. I replaced the power modules with superior, brand new modules and a new low noise fan, which can be switched on or off and has a high low speed switch. This power supply is very efficient and can be run with the fan off for brief periods of time or with the fan on low for extended periods of time. That can be helpful if you keep the power supply in your control room. The supply on the right came with the Big 28 when I purchased it from Ben McLeod. It works fine, but I want the reliability of a new power supply for this desk. To make my custom power supply work for this Big 28, I'll have to swap the back panels of these power supplies. It's fairly straightforward. All the wires leading to the DC power outlet are mounted on studs. I'll just have to unbolt them and carefully label each of the wires so I know what goes where and I don't screw anything up. The power supply is currently turned off. The lid is off and it's plugged into an outlet. That means I have to be careful. And you should too if you ever have a power supply or an electrical device like this where the electronics are exposed and it's plugged into an outlet. It's dangerous. You could get hurt, you could get killed. You don't want to do that. So some rules are only one hand at a time, the other one is safely tucked away. And I have in my hand a screwdriver with a plastic handle. This is an important thing to have. That way I'm not touching anything made of metal. I don't want to create any kind of accidental contact with something that could electrocute me. Okay, now all of these little power supply modules have their own little set screw that will allow you to fine tune the voltage for each of them. I have a 12 volt power supply tucked off here, which we're not going to focus on right now because that's something that I added in just to power the fan, which is removed right now. It's, it's attached to the top lid. What we have in here is a positive and negative 17 volt rail, a 5 volt rail and a 48 volt rail and all of these go into this filter over here which is a stock circuit board from the 400 series power supply i recapped it and it has a bunch of chokes and between the chokes and the caps it really does a great job of filtering out noise so i kept it in here whenever you're building a power supply like this it's pretty easy to do as long as you know a few parameters such as how much current each rail is going to draw and how much space you have to work inside of your enclosure. And the heat may also be a factor. So as long as you can identify those parameters, you're okay. But when in doubt, go bigger. Bigger is better. You can't overdo it in terms of how much current these little modules are designed to output, but you can underdo it. So whatever you can get that is fairly large should cut it for you. The 400 series power supply that came with the desk is perfectly fine. It's working just great. It's dialed in even, but I wanna include a warranty with the sale of this desk and I don't feel comfortable doing that with such an old power supply. Usually the first thing to fail with these old electronics is the power supply and to be quite frank, I don't know how long it's gonna last, even though it's working right now. The safest thing for me to do is to sell the desk with a brand new power supply. These modules are brand new, bought them off of Mauser. So, this one I trust and I know will last a long time. Now I have this multimeter set to measure DC volts on the 20 volt scale and it is connected to the 5 volt rail in the console so that we can check the 5 volt rail to see if it's within range. And I'm measuring the voltage at the desk 
because there are losses involved with the cable that feeds from the power supply to the desk and then within the desk's own power distribution network there are losses. So it's best to measure the voltage right where the channels are getting it. That way you know what it is after all of those losses. And that's why you need an adjustable power supply so that you can dial it up to whatever it needs to be. Now, I'm gonna turn on the power supply and we'll see where our voltage is at. And it is at 4.6 volts, which is below range. And you'll notice that the mixing board's dynamic lights are currently on, which they should not be. So I'm going to turn up the voltage on the five volt rail until we get it to be five volts and then we'll probably see these LEDs on the mixing board turn off. Now all of these power supplies have an adjustable set screw on them to dial them into range. And we're going up slowly. Our dynamics lights came off. And five volts, there we go. So we're gonna see what the 48 volt rail looks like when we turn the desk on. Now remember, keep your hands out of there. And just like that, it is 48.3 volts. It actually doesn't require an adjustment. But if I did need to adjust it, I would do it right here. There's a little plastic set screw. To build your own power supply is relatively simple if you go about it the way Amec did with their power supply. They used a whole bunch of off-the-shelf power supply modules to supply the various voltages needed by the console. Each module has at least one output voltage, and these are usually adjustable, so that's what we're looking for. Now how will we find that? Well, the best place to start is an electronic parts distributor, like DigiKey or Mauser Electronics, and type into the search field, what we're about to do right here, which is 48V DC power supply. Let's see what we get. A whole bunch of stuff comes up, but if we just look down there, the second thing that came up is exactly what we're looking for. It's an open frame switching power supply. If we look at the description of it, the description fits the bill. It says it's 5.24 amps, and that's more than enough. It's 48 volts DC. Let's take a look at the picture to see it up close. Yeah, that's exactly what we're looking for. It'll fit inside the enclosure no problem at all. The price is $103.75. You may think that's expensive, but when you're dealing with low noise, high quality power supplies with high output current, you can certainly expect to pay prices like that. If you cheap out and spend 10 or $20 on a power supply module, you can expect it to be noisy. The original power supply is working just fine, but having one now with new power rails in it ensures the reliability and longevity of the power supply. And it also provides a lower noise floor for the mix bus. If you found this video interesting, please give me the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button to find out about the next video in which we will be covering the topic of restoring and modernizing a vintage computer. That's right, I'm gonna go on eBay, buy up some hunk of junk, replace the hard drive with a solid state drive, give it a floppy emulator, and rebuild its power supply. Also replace the coin cell battery, install MS-DOS, and you get it, you know, we're gonna be doing quite a bit of crazy old stuff. So if you find that sort of thing interesting, make sure you hit the notification bell to find out about it. Thanks, see you next time, bye-bye.